Hi, in this second video we're going to talk about uh, uh, basic QL models. And in all models we're going to assume that the arrival rate is lambda. That is the mean time between arrivals is 1 over lambda. We also assume that the mean service time per server is 1 over mu, which means the, mean, the, service rate, the mean service rate is mu. It is important here to distinguish the difference between mean and rate. The rate is equal to 1 over the mean and vice versa. So in all models, we're going to assume that the system to be in steady state, which means it has reached statistical equilibrium. Uh, okay, so uh, and we are going to discuss five models, five simple models. The there are hundreds of models to talk about, but just we're going to focus on these five. <clears throat> the first and simplest and the most basic is called the MM1 model, uh, which means the arrival process is Poisson with rate lambda, so our arrival rate is lambda. Service times are exponential, means the distribution of service times is exponential with mean 1 over mu, which means the rate is mu. So we serve customers at rate mu. Uh, customers per unit time. We also assume we have an infinite, we have one server, we have an infinite waiting room and infinite population size. So potential customers come from an infinite population. We assume the system is in steady state uh, which, uh, and stable, which means lambda should be less than mu. So this is the condition for stability. Lambda is less than mu. Okay. So under these conditions, and we, we're going to skip the analysis, ana analysis part, we can compute these performance measures. So I want to go over these ones quickly. P0, that's the probability there are zero customers in the system, which means the server is idle, or the percentage of time the server is idle, is 1 minus lambda over mu. Uh, L is the mean number of customers in the system is equal to lambda over mu minus lambda. So that's on average how many customers are in the system. Pn is the probability there are n customers in the system and that's 1 minus lambda over mu which is the same this amount times lambda over mu raised to power n. And if anybody is familiar with the geometric probability distribution this is it. So this should remind you of a geometric probability distribution. Uh, look, dub PW, the probability that uh, a customer, uh, when a customer arrives, it finds the server busy. So that's the prob that's the fraction of time the server is busy. It's lambda over mu, which is the same as rho, which is the probability that the server is busy or the server utilization lambda over mu. We talked about L. LQ is the mean number of customers in the system and it's given by this formula lambda square over mu times in mu minus lambda. W is 1 over mu minus lambda. That's the mean number of customers in the system and that's the mean number of customers in the queue. Actually, you could probably you can verify that L equal lambda W and LQ equal lambda WQ and that L equal LQ plus lambda over mu and W equal WQ plus 1 over mu which is the mean service time from those general relationships we talked about before. Okay. Uh, so time spent, how long a customer spends in the system uh, since we have an MM1Q the mean time is 1 over mu minus lambda, which is what we had here. Uh, but also we can compute the probability that a customer will spend more than t hours in the system. More than, that would be e minus mu minus lambda t, which means mu minus lambda is the rate of, the, of an exponential service times. Probability a customer will spend less than t, which is going to be hours in the system, which would be the complement of this, or t units of time in the system would be 1 minus e minus mu minus lambda t. 
So let's go over a, an example on this. Suppose we have the following example. The mirror is store. Customers arrive on average once every 12 minutes according to a Poisson process. Mary estimates she can serve a customer in an average of 8 minutes according to an exponential service time distribution. Mary also serves one customer at a time. So we're going to know how good is this queuing system. So we want to first want to put everything in the same time units. Let's pick hours. You can use hours or minutes, doesn't matter, but we want to use say hours. So our arrival rate, lambda, it says one customer every 12 minutes, that's going to be five customers per hour. In mu means one, one customer can be served every eight minutes, so that's equivalent to 7.5 per hour. It's very important that we use those numbers. Lambda equals five customers per hour, mu equals 7.5 customers per hour. So that's how I have comment here. It's extremely important that lambda and mu have the same units. If one is minutes, the other is hours, we need to make sure they have the same unit. So now we can compute the performance measures. Uh, P0, we have the formula. We substitute. We got 1 over 3. We substitute in the formula, basically just substitute the values and you can see lambda is 5, mu is 7.5 and that gives me 1 over 3. So Pn here, n stays here, so that's a distribution. So now if I have n equal 2, I can find this probability, a probability of having 3 customers in the system. I substitute n equal 3 and compute that. Pw is lambda over mu, which is... Uh, lambda is, uh, what is it, uh, 5, and mu is 7.5, so that gives me 2 over 3, same thing for rho, L equal lambda over mu minus lambda, so that's 5 over 7.5 minus 5, gives me an average of two customers in the system, LQ, I have the formula, so that's 5 squared, 7.5, 7.5 minus 5, I, sub I simplify, I get 4 over 3, W, 1 over mu minus lambda, so that's about 0.4 an hour in the system, and uh, WQ is 415 or 0.26 hours, uh, so this may be too long, I don't know, so, so the difference would be how long you spend in service, and so these are the performance measures. Uh, so, uh, so what if we were able to increase the service rate to more customers per hour? Suppose Mary is able to serve now uh, a customer in six minutes. So that means the mean service rate is going to become ten customers per hour. Uh, so if I change mu to ten instead of seven point five, how would that affect my performance measures and this is an exercise for you to basically uh, comp recompute all the performance measures. Uh, so that's the first model. The second model is an MMK model and uh, first we start with the assumptions. Uh, in this case customers arrive according to a Poisson process with a mean of lambda. That's the first M. Service times follow an exponential distribution with each of the k servers works at an average rate of mu and now we want lambda is less than k mu since I have k of them. So that's my stability condition. And we have formulas for the performance measures or the metrics are more involved than the MM1 case. So we're going to use Excel add-in for that and please check the videos on the Excel add-ins. Okay. And so uh, I want to ask you to use, do this example as an exercise. Suppose customers arrive to a bank according to a Poisson distribution with a mean of lambda equal 15 customers per hour. Each bank teller can help on average 8 customers per hour. There are 3 bank tellers. Uh, can we can you compute the performance measures uh, using Excel? 
And what if instead of having three bank tellers, we had two? How would the performance measures change? Uh, so I want to ask you, and we'll uh, please check the video on on using Excel to do that. Uh, the MG1 model. So now here service times. Uh, the of course uh, we have post on arrivals with rate lambda, but service times have a general form. And as I said before, in this case we need to know the mean and the standard deviation of service times. So we assume lambda is the mean arrival rate. Mu is the service rate, or one over mu mean service time. Sigma is the standard deviation of service times and then L L is the mean number of customers in the system is given by this formula so we have lambda sigma square lambda over mu square over 2 into 1 minus lambda over mu plus lambda over mu and you notice that LQ equal L minus lambda over mu from those general relationships which means LQ would be just this part of it and of course if I can if I want to compute the mu I first compute L divided by lambda so from my littles formula and I can get WQ from by taking LQ and divide by lambda uh, so I, if I have an MD model and where my service times are deterministic everything else is the same for deterministic service times the standard deviation is zero so I just go up there and make this zero and then I can get formulas for L and LQ and W and WQ from those general relationships. Uh, if I have Erlang in system, Erlang means I have several independent tasks. So each server will require a series of independent. Each one are, is exponential. We call that an Erlangian distribution. In this case, the standard deviation would be 1 over mu times the square root of n. Uh, let's just go by for a general an example here customers arrive at your food truck according to a post on process with a mean of lambda equals six customers per hour service times have a mean of three minutes and the standard deviation of point of 5.7 minutes uh, so first we need to make sure we have the notation correct. So lambda is the mean arrival rate, that's the formula. One over mu is the mean service time. Sigma is the standard deviation. Lambda is six customers per hour. One over mu is three minutes, which means 0 0.05 hours, which means mu is 20 per hour. And sigma is 5.7 minutes standard deviation we're going to convert that to 0 0.095 hours and we take those values for lambda this value for sigma and this value for mu and substitute them there to get l so that's an exercise we ask you to substitute those values up there to get l and then use little's formula and the general relationships to find lq w and wq the other performance measures The MGK K loss model. Here is a. This is called a, the loss model with blocked customers cleared. Uh, so basically, this is typical in call service where uh, if you find uh, if there is no one to answer the phone, you just got blocked and you get a busy signal. So Poisson arrival rate with mean lambda. That's the arrivals. K servers. Uh, with exponential service uh, each with e exponential doesn't have to be exponential actually it can be general service times and the formulas would be the same in this case upper limit of k customers who can be present in the system at any given time if additional customers try to enter the system they will be blocked and will be lost they get a busy signal model assumes blocked customers are lost forever N note that I was to say not all customers who arrive will be able to enter the system so first we need to know at what rate 
customers enter the system and we call that lambda e the effective arrival rate customers get blocked when there are a customers already in the system the chance of this occurring is called pk the probability of having k customers in the system that as many customers as there are servers so then if someone new arrives they will be blocked they cannot get in we then calculate the effective arrival rate as lambda e equal lambda times 1 minus pk so that's the probability of not being blocked and that's the rate of arrival so that's the rate of those that go in so we need to be able to compute pk first to be able to do that and we do that from this formula so this formula gives me the probability of having j customers in the system or j servers busy basically slam the over mu raised to power j over j factorial and then i have lambda over mu i over i factorial we compute that for i equals 0 1 2 up to k add them up and that gives me pj so if i take jk make j equal to k over all of this i get pk and that's why i use here to get my effective arrival rate and i once i compute pk basically here i can compute l quite easily because that's going to be the lambda effective arrival rate lambda into 1 minus pk divided by mu and then I can get, of course, in this case, for this loss system, WQ and LQ, the number of customers in Q and the how long you wait in Q are zeros because there's no waiting line. You only have servers and you either get into service immediately or you'll be lost. Okay? Uh, so to compute the remaining performance measures, we first compute PK probability of blocking from the formula for bj then compute lambda e and l uh, i want to stop here and uh, have a new video for uh, the finite population model and uh, cost analysis